Leave? No, no, no. Stay right where ah. Hmm? It's probably the hardest thing that I've ever worked on. I like to think of Dark Crystal as sort of a work of art. And of all projects, it's the one that I'm the most proud of. I just fell in love with it, and I've been in love with it ever since. I just remember it being quite an overwhelming experience, you know. Another one of those movies where you come out of the cinema slightly changed. I remember it vividly. I loved it. It's such an incredibly all-encompassing world, and the Skeksis are bloody scary. What have the Skeksis done? People were telling stories with puppetry long before they decided to come up and act because they were too frightened to act because they were trying to represent all the ancient gods and all the myths. We're just bringing back with the current technologies and sort of mythology that we've got this desire to explore these different storylines, but we're just being able to do it through Netflix and through <laughs> animatronics. The great thing about voice work is that it's inherently a collaborative process and you are far from the most important cog in the machine. They have made choices in movement, in pace, in style. They've made characterization choices that you inherit. It's a very interesting process and it's been very, very challenging in a good way because usually when you do a voice in something, if you do animation, you do the voice and then the animators take your voice and they animate to the voice. With this, it's the other way around. You have to match your performance to the puppeteers, who are all very good at what they do. They are actors, you know, they characterize, but you have to match their mouth flaps. <clears throat> she told you to let go. She told you to let go. To the crystal chamber! Ah, scroll keeper! Scroll keeper! You take a lot of time to get it right, because you can be satisfied that you match the movement and sync, but you try to give performances that are as real and as engaging as possible. I don't think puppeteers aren't well known by nature of their job that they are hidden. Uh, and I don't think there's very few famous puppeteers. It is an art where you choose to hide. And I very much think it's like a, a musician, that you have an instrument, but you play a beautiful tune on it. But we all listen to the, we all listen to the tune, it's the tune we remember. It's not necessarily the piano it was played on, it's the, the character that, that lives and has its own life. Do you have uh, a plan? Yes. But you're not going to like it. <sighs> it's a team effort, like it's genuinely a team effort. It's a huge variety of people uh, in this from different countries and cultures and uh, I think you'll get a sense of that. You'll get a sense of a big eclectic world. All thrive is a risk. The darkening corrupts everything it touches. What is the darkening? Behold. Seven clans, which are each run by their own Madra, who's the matriarch, and then all the Madras, the queen of all of them is the Almadra, and she is of the Vapra clan. One of the things that I love about fantasy worlds is the breakdown of our own world segregations. Remember, the bonds of sisterhood can be tested, but never broken. Teddy Biaselli had told me that Henson were interested in doing an animated series of The Dark Crystal, and I thought about it, and I went home and I watched the movie again. You know, I kept thinking about it. I was like, well, the mythology is great, but what makes it really special and transcendent is the puppets. I picked up the phone, I was like, okay, 
Good news, bad news. Uh, bad news is we're not gonna make the Dark Crystal animated series. The good news is Cindy wants to know what it would cost to do it live action. And you could hear the phone hit the floor. And we were shocked, like, <laughs> like really? A series that looks like the film? And of course, of course we immediately responded that it's yes, like it's technically possible, but it would be very expensive. The best version of the Dark Crystal that could be made today would be made by the Henson Company by giving them the freedom to really reach for the best version they can possibly imagine. We as a company have been doing puppets for over 50 years and to be here at this point so many years later and be doing what is got to be the biggest puppet production ever. This has no humans, so it is a complete puppet extravaganza. The best the idea okay. is that uh, you, you watch the show and you forget oh, you watch the puppets. I think it's wonderful to revisit something that Jim did 35 years ago. The thread that keeps it all going was Louis. And I also like to think the fact that it is Dark Crystal, the spiritual thread comes right from Jim all the way through and Brian as well. There's so few people that know how we did it the first time. Mm. And we're so old, we don't remember how we did it the first time. I think it's amazing that the whole Froud family has kind of come back. Like, to see the three of them working together is incredible. And to see him w watch his son follow in sort of the family business. But it's not even the family business, it's like the family world. That's where I think we're sort of thriving in this fact, is the fact that we're you know, we're in this world that's so natural to us as a family that we're able to, to just impart what we know or what we actually just know to be real. I went into the Creature Workshop and it's still the Frouds who are creating these wonderful otherworldly creations. And it's Brian Froud's son who is doing a lot of the work in there. And I, I was like a fanboy meeting him because he's the baby from Labyrinth. And then the duality of not only seeing someone from a film that I loved as a child, but then also seeing his creative prowess and this incredible work he's doing. It was just fantastic to go and get a glimpse of all that. I like the darkness that's embraced with the Dark Crystal, I really do. I think sometimes we can sanitize and spoon feed children and young adults a bit too much. We have a real respect for the younger audience, which is that you don't have to shield them from everything uncomfortable. You actually have to let people experience some of like these grittier aspects of the world that we live in, and maybe the world becomes a little less scary because of that. What fans of The Dark Crystal want is they want an odyssey, they want a saga, they want something to enrich the universe of the original film, and that's what this series does. It, you could put them side by side and it is the same world, but there's just so much more of it to explore now.